Hey folks, um, hopefully you found the Canvas assignment stem plots using Colab with our software. Um, and by the way, uh, don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. That, that's a lot of strange things that you just heard, um, but everything's going to be okay. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, I've got a little video uh, that ex that's I'm where I'm going to explain to you what, what, uh, how to do something and then what you need to do to show me that you learned something. So uh, we're going to create a stem and leaf plot using our software. Uh, our software is kind of famous. Uh, maybe not to you, but it's, it's very popular with universities and many businesses now. Um, let's see here. Now, I have a link for you to go to a place where we can write the code using R. And the cool thing is, is the place we're going to go is to your Google Suite that also lets you do Google Sheets and Google Slides and Google Docs. Uh, so it's all part of your free school software. And if you have a personal Google account, it's all part of that as well. Um, the only thing that's a little bit that we're going to do is a little bit different is that normally uh, where we're going to go to write this code, it's called Google Colab. Uh, maybe I can show it for you. Let's try this. Colab. Let's try. Um, if we go here, and by the way, we could have gone there through uh, Google Drive because it is a, it's a Google Drive thing. Um, if we go here, uh, basically what happens is it says create a new notebook. You're, please don't do this, by the way. This is just to show you what Google Colab is and what I mean by writing computer programs. Um, let's write our first cool computer program. Print, hello world, and then I'll run it. This is what computer programs do. You give them instructions and then they do what you ask. There we go, hello world, yay. Okay, now, there's only one little problem, is that natively, uh, when you run Google Colab, it wants you to write computer code using Python, a, the programming language called Python. We want to use the programming language called R. Now, here's the thing. If we try to write using the R programming language. Imagine, imagine uh, me going into a local store and speaking in Italian and trying to get what I want. It, I might have some issues. So uh, that's a little problem we'd run into with Google Colab here. Um, one of the things I'd like us to do is I'd like us to be able to plot various types of graphs, including the stem and leaf plot. And by the way, uh, one of the reasons that we're using uh, Google Colab and R is because it's one of the few pieces of software that I found that uh, is commonly used amongst people who crunch numbers. And, uh, and, uh, and so I wanted to present you with a real world tool that just happens to be able to show stem and leaf plots. Not a lot of other real world software that I found does. Anyways, so uh, the problem is this, is if I want to do a stem and leaf plot using Google Colab uh, and uh, R, it's not going to work. Uh, so, uh, but let's just, just try. So I'm going to take some data. I'm going to make something up, uh, something like 45, 21, 34, 46, uh, 57. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to do a stem and leaf plot, which really short, easy command, stem data. I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And the problem is, is I come up with an error message because stem is an R programming language command and Python, Python does not have that command built in. That's why we use different programming languages. Some of them give us some capabilities and other languages give us different capabilities. So I'm going to show you how to use Google Colab, which is free to us and free to you when you're in the working world. Uh, and uh, and we'll make it so that it understands R. And in the future, we also may write some Python programs. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and use R. So how do we do that? We go back to 
canvas and I've got a link for you. I've also got another version of the link. Here's a shortened version of the link. Uh, either one of these should take us to Google Colab, except when we get there, now Google Colab is going to let us program in R instead of Python. And one way that we can verify that is we can go to runtime and change runtime type and we can see that R is being used instead of Python. Uh, you don't normally have to check that. And there is another way, by the way. Um, we can quickly try to do a um, stem and leaf plot and see what happens. So I'm going to put some numbers in here. Okay, so here's some, here's some data that could be um, uh, plotted in a stem and leaf plot. And I'm going to try to use the R command stem. And then I will give it the data in order to, to do this, to plot the stem and leaf plot. Let's go ahead and hit run. And sometimes it takes a little while. There we go. It finally got done. Okay, so uh, this is pretty cool. We got a little stem and leaf plot. Now, the thing is this, is that uh, um, we uh, th this stem and leaf plot looks a lot like what we did in class, which is good. Um, you can see that there's one stem per row of information, and then there's multiple leaves. So it looks like everything's working just great. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the sample data that I provided for you in Canvas so you can practice. So uh, down here, um, I have some data, and this is actually from the textbook. Uh, this is data with regard to, um, uh, let's see here, do we, does it say? Oh, I might have deleted it out. Um, uh, oh, Brett Farr. Uh, it's uh, Brett Farr. Uh, these are um, passes, um, uh, I guess yards per pass. Uh, I mean, yards, uh, passes per, I think that's maybe season, passes per season. Uh, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, that seems like a lot, but anyways, let's go on. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this data. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do control C. If I was on a Mac, I do control V and then I'll come over here and I'm going to paste the data into here. Control V. Uh, if you're on a Mac command V. Now, fortunately, that data already had commas. I'm going to show you in a minute. Sometimes you have data that does not have commas, and I'm going to show you a cool little trick. Uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And you should do this also. You should do this. This is your practice. Um, so anyways, uh, we can see that we got a stem and leaf plot, but it does look a little different than the last one. On this one, our stems are two apart, so 30, 32, 34, 36. It's not really that terrible. Uh, I, I, I'm suspicious that there is no data in the 31 stem or the 33 or the 35. Coincident. Or, well, actually, wait a second. Why is it doing that? Okay, something's a little funky here because I definitely have 356, so I'm not sure where that appears there. What we're going to do is we're going to alter how the collab and the R uh, formats the stem and leaf plot, and here's how you do it. And taking notes on this would be helpful. Uh, you uh, just write scale equals, and there's basically three values for scale that we are going to concern ourselves with. Uh, either 0 0.5, which is also known as 1 half, or 1, or 2. And we're going to try all three just to see what happens. I'm going to try 0 0.5 and hit run. And now I can see that it mushed all my data together. Um, let's go ahead and try a 1 instead of 0 0.5 and hit run. And this looks an awful lot like what we already had. And then I'm going to try 2 and hit run. And voila, that is what I was looking for. Um, now I have my stems going 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, just like in class, yay. And, uh, and then we can also see all the leaves. And I can see that I've got a 356, and there's definitely a 356. And somewhere here I got a 359, yay, because there's a 359. So this seems to be doing a lot more of what I wanted to do. I just had to know about that little extra um, it's known as a parameter uh, that, that tells my stem and leaf plot how to look. It tells, tells the uh, R programming language how to make the stem and leaf plot, uh, aside from just giving it data. Okay. Um, oh, and be careful when you are typing this in, make sure you do put this lowercase c and then uh, open parentheses and close parentheses 
and also all the commas in between. Now, speaking of all the commas in between, um, let's take a look at some other data. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, I've got some decimal data for you. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and this this data supposedly, oh, it's interesting because it shows the weights of a bunch of randomly selected pennies. So uh, let's take a look and see what this looks like. Um, here we go. Again, we're just practicing. The thing is this time, though, when I go to paste the data in there, I've got all these spaces. And if I go to hit uh, run, it's going to come back with an error because it wants commas, not spaces. So I want to show you a really cool trick. And this is something that might help you in all of your classes. Some of you may have found yourself in this situation where there's something all throughout a document that you'd like to replace. It's called find and replace. Hopefully you already know about it, but if not, this is pure magic. You're welcome. Uh, here we go. We're going to do find and replace. And I'm going to say I'm looking for a space. And I'm going to say replace that space with a comma. And then what it did is over here, it's highlighted all the places where it thinks it sees spaces. And I'm just going to say replace all. There's a couple places where I don't want commas, but there's so many places where I do. Rather than going one by one, replace, 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 I'm just going to go replace all. And then I'm going to go fix what, what doesn't need to be there manually. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this comma not needed get rid of this comma not needed and I definitely don't need double commas there um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and try to run this and when I do I find that I still have an error message and the error message here uh, let me see I guess I cannot get rid of this toolbar it's so nice if I could um, clear output uh, yeah well let me get rid of it anyways the thing that I wanted to show you is that when I did the search and replace for all the spaces um, there was uh, over here at the end of this 3.12, there is no space. It just goes to the next line. Um, and so therefore a comma was never inserted there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit comma. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how the heck does he know that? How do I know that? Teach me, Weingarten, how to find something like that. And all I can tell you is this. Um, a lot of what I know about uh, like writing computer programming uh, or technology in general comes from the fact that I've been working on it for like at least 30 years now. Um, maybe 40 anyways um, so uh, so yeah a lot a lot of experience but in general the same ideas that apply to all the problems that we try to solve in class the same concepts apply you've got to keep trying don't give up um, you know and try to use logic and reasoning and strategy um, what would my logic and reasoning and strategy be here well one thing would be is maybe I should go through with a fine-tooth comb and double check everything that I've written oh the other thing is is they do give us a hint in the uh, error message um, they say that the uh, place where they're having the problem is right here where the 3.10 is now I can't see any problem there but if I go back a lot of times the problem in a computer program is back a few steps so um, in this case if I went back I can see ah there's a comma missing there okay anyways let me go ahead and hit run and now we got the stem and leaf plot and we have split stems um, uh, and, and in this case well let's go ahead and take a look if we have a scale of one scale of one uh, everything looks pretty uh, looks good but uh, 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 again it's worthwhile to experiment with all the scales I'll try 0 0.5 um, this one I think the data is too mushed together um, I'm gonna go back to one this one looks pretty good, but I have to say in this case, I think I like the scale of two because I can see a little bit more of the shape of the data. Now, some of you are wondering, what the heck is up with all these stems with no data in them? Uh, again, I'm going to remind you, this is the weight of randomly chosen pennies. It turns out that it's some year, not that long ago, I'd have to look it up, um, their uh, pennies were, uh, they changed the, what they made them out of, uh, and as a result, they weigh a different amount. And and so that's what we're seeing here is some pennies uh, made in different years have different weights. Um, the thing that's kind of cool, though, is that uh, even pennies made around the same time have different weights. Um, maybe that's because some of them get a little more worn and some of them are a little less worn, uh, worn out, I should say. Uh, 
Anyways, um, so, so that's another example of how to do a stem and leaf plot using Google Colab and R and some of the tri tips and tricks you'll need along the way in case you run into problems. Okay, one last thing. Let's make sure that you're doing the right thing to get credit for this. Um, in, the, uh, in the Canvas assignment, it says you must do, what I want you to do is take this data. I want you to take this data and make a stem and leaf plot. And uh, when you do, I want you to upload the screenshot of what you did to this assignment. Oh, it also says make sure that your name is in the code and comments. So let's go back and fix that. So how do you put your name in the code and comments? You can do this. You can go uh, hashtag, uh, in my case, Michael Weingarten, and then you'll do the screenshot after this. Now, um, when you, some of you might have some difficulty figuring out how to do a screenshot. Some of you are going to try to give me a screenshot of the entire screen. I don't want that. I want you to grab just the specific area that needs to have a screenshot of it. In this case, it would be just grab um, the code and this stem and leaf plot. I don't need to see the top part. Um, I don't need to see the whole width of the screen. Just give me the gist of it. Um, and uh, if you want to know how to do screenshots, I've got some information for you here in Canvas. Uh, there is a, uh, a whole module item on screenshots where I explain how to do screenshots with Windows 10, how to do it with Macs, and how to do it with a Chromebook. So um, if, if you don't, you obviously maybe you know how to do it or you could Google it, but here's some information for you so you don't have to go too far. And I think that's it. That's everything you need to know about using Google Colab and creating stem plots using R. And, and now you know what you need to do. You need to go and say, see it's where it says turn this in by screenshot and upload? Make sure you do this. And, uh, and make sure your name is in the code in the comments. If you can do that, you get credit for completing this assignment. And we're going to use Google Colab and R more in the future. Anyways, uh, hope that was helpful to you. Uh, feel free to contact me by remind or email uh, if you need help. I would like to remind you, do not contact me by sending me a message through Canvas. Um, sometimes those messages don't get to me. Um, but, but my email at the school, mwinegarden at conejousd.org, or send me a remind. Remind would be best. All right, guys, good luck.